Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of Very Good Enough. Oh my god, the helicopter is back. (laughs) You guys. Okay, so my husband has this thing about moths where they're like a some kind of like special animal to him. Oh, it's so loud. This one is Um, landing on our roof. (laughs) And (laughs) he sometimes like moths will like land on the window or they'll be in the hallway or whatever, and he just always feels like moths are hanging over him. And I'm just gonna say yes, it's like a blessing, like a sweet they're watching him. So I'm just gonna say that these three helicopters military groups helicopters <laughs> are the moths watching over Aww, our podcast that is so sweet because they just really appear as soon as we begin to record they really do yeah even when i arrived to your house today the one flew over hey welcome hey. <laughs> maybe it's <laughs> you the they're your spirit animal <laughs> they are just kidding they're always here i prefer hummingbirds yeah those are my moth if when i see them i'm like oh see look how busy but how calm they are Aww. and how they gravitate towards beauty to get nourished Jess, that's yeah. beautiful. <laughs> that's that's so beautiful. Thank you. We just had a spooky oh, moment, didn't we? Friends. We just recorded the best interview. You're about to hear it because we do have it. Yeah. But um, the spooky moment was it we seemed like maybe thought we thought it was gone. <laughs> Um, yes. So we're obviously welcome to guests on Very Good Enough and so fun and we're so excited about it and the conversations are so good, but it's just also another little learning curve of using like a, a new software. Yeah. So I got a little scared. So you're catching us at a but, high adrenaline moment. Yeah. But good thing in this podcast, we learn how to rest our adrenals. Yes. We learn I how even to rest our what that adrenals. Means. Oh, this interview so is who with did we talk to? The best. My friend, the one and only Danny Rhodes, who is a nutritionist. She's my nutritionist. She specializes in pe- the perinatal years, so two years before conception and then the two years after mm-hmm. your baby has been born. She works with moms and dads getting ready to be moms and dads, and then she works with you through your whole pregnancy and has protocols to support all the way through that. And then when your little baby comes out, getting you better, getting your baby super healthy and well, just like that first step of everybody getting what they need. She's so knowledgeable. Yeah. She has oh courses, guys, on how to feed your toddlers on mm-hmm. up to year 18. Yes. Courses for your partners, mm-hmm. like everything. Yeah. And she, she, oh my gosh, she gave a very good mother's club an amazing deal. Should I tell them? Yeah, tell them. She said she's going to give you 35% off any of her courses, which they look amazing. Ugh. I want to send one. Actually, while she was talking, I was thinking of this one particular friend that I want to gift the course too. I won't tell her. <laughs> I won't say who it is. I want it to be a surprise. Uh, this stuff is so good. It's so good. So so Danny Rhodes, her business is called Happy Healthy Littles and mm-hmm. she has packages for all these different stages of uh, nutritional support for you and for your family. And even if you are past the having babies, getting better from having babies, having small children years, she has a well woman package for when your hormones change again later in life. And these packages are full of just everything you need, everything you need to know about food, everything you need to know about the way that your body functions in relation to your nutrition. And um, also they come with Danny is the thing. You get access to actual Danny herself. I text Danny literally whenever I have a question. She's so smart, guys. And she's so like passionate. As mm-hmm. she's speaking, I'm like, this is the most important thing. I know. Yeah, it's it's her stuff so good. Yeah. So you'll hear you'll you'll hear how compelling she is. She like to listen to her talk, you immediately are like, oh finally, someone's mm-hmm. just gonna tell me what I need in order to be well. Yeah. You'll um, also hear so me go silent as inside myself I panic because I'm like, oh no, I'm doing it all wrong. Mm-hmm. And then I talk myself back to baby slap steps, Jessica. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just take baby Baby steps, implement some of the stuff. So if any of you relate, if you listen and you're like, oh gosh, um, that's okay. Join yeah. join the club, right? I think that's really normal. I think it's normal. That's why her stuff is so important mm-hmm. is because it's counter, kind of countercultural or like counter society. Yeah. Though I feel like we're now moving towards a lot more health and wellness and understanding the connection mm-hmm. between our diet and our mental health. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, when I was listening, there is a part of me where I was like, oh gosh, I'm doing everything wrong. What right, do I do? Right. How do I start fresh? Right. And, um, and yeah, it makes sense process. to feel that way because it feels very big mm-hmm. um, and it feels very sort of like opaque. Like the process feels like something that we're kind of kept out of, like our own health and our own understanding of like how we function. So I too had like a big emotional hurdle to get mm. through. It, it can feel scary to – come in, come into contact with something where you know like, oh, this means that I would need to really change, change quite a few a things in life. Mm-hmm. But what I want to say about that, and I say it later in the episode too, is that the 
the powerful thing about shifting your nutrition, particularly in a way that like supports your own mental health and mental functioning, is that you start to feel better really immediately. Yeah. So when you do these things, it's not like the current mental struggling depleted version of me is going to have to do this hard thing forever it's like no i'm going to very quickly start to feel better yeah, and like gain energized. back more of my own capacity and my energy and so actually like this part at the beginning this is the part where it's hard and it's actually about mm-hmm. to get a lot easier just mm-hmm. over the side of this yeah so just a like quick little background i've i've known danny personally for a while and then i started to work with her in the time period when I was teaching preschool and it was um, maybe like eight months after my, my bad guy encounter, which Mm -hmm. we have, Mm -hmm. we have discussed. Um, So I had a propensity toward anxiety and depression anyways. And I was in a particular time of true post-traumatic stress and I was vegetarian. I have some um, unfortunate news for any vegetarian folks who are listening. This is not a veg friendly discussion. Yeah. She's going to encourage you to eat animal animal stuff. Yes. And animal stuff is not the word she'll use. (laughs) No, um, it isn't, but it's, it's effective Mm -hmm. animal stuff. Um, so the thing is, I, I, I'm sorry about that. Um, I also have to say like choosing to add high quality animal fats and proteins back into my life radically, radically changed the function of my brain and my mood. Mm -hmm. So I too still feel like, what do I do about environmental factors and, and stuff? And I'm not sure. I just yeah. like want to be up front that I don't really have an answer about that. I do know that I need to function as a person mm-hmm. and that shifting to this kind of eating changed my mood and my emotions and my energy level and my ability to function, which is my experience of life. Mm-hmm. And so if I, yeah, that that's, that's what life feels like. Like that's mm-hmm. what I feel like my life is made out of, mm-hmm. right? Is mm-hmm. all of these things. And um, being well in this way has enabled me to have strong relationships and pursue the things that I want in life and like be able to access who I am. Mm -hmm. Basically, I felt like who I am was buried under this person who was exhausted and um, uh, like recently pretty traumatized Mm -hmm. and like feeling empty and feeling depressed. Like I couldn't get to the richness of me to live my life. Yeah. So and, that's and kind getting of, sick a lot. You were talking about the so much. being prone to sickness, yes. especially as a preschool, preschool. teacher, mm-hmm. constantly exposed yes. to illnesses yeah. and cute little kids. Uh-huh. Yeah. I so. basically don't get sick anymore. Wow. And that's like a huge statement. But I also like I want to make it because if you have small mm-hmm. children and you're getting sick all the time, mm-hmm. your life is just an endless string of sicknesses. Mm-hmm. That's not something that just has to be part of your life. Mm-hmm. It's not just along with these kinds of like anxiety and stuff, like things that feel like, oh, bummer. I'm just a person who's stuck with this stuff. There's actually like a lot that can be done. Like power can come back into your hands to say Mm -hmm. like, my family is going to be healthy. My mind is going to be well. Mm -hmm. My energy levels are going to come up. I'm going to have what I need. Mm -hmm. So I want this to be a very encouraging episode. And I wanted to just like share a little bit of how impacted I've been by making these shifts in the way that I eat and what I take in. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. yeah, I just want to get a lot of encouragement going into this episode, especially because it is so full of information that can be mm-hmm. daunting. Mm-hmm. So I want to lift you up on a happy yeah. feelings and promise that like this is a thing that you can do if it is a thing that you want. Mm-hmm. And also this actual person that you're about to hear from is available to you. Yeah. I mean, you can even DM her. Her Instagram is out there and you mm-hmm. can ask more questions. She's great and really kind. Yeah. 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 So everything that you need is in the show notes to get a hold of Danny. And um, without any further ado we'll just launch you straight in perfect i am so excited again to have you here um we talked we talked in the in the in the the december in the December, in the fall, about <laughs> depression. That's where I got yeah, stuck because I was going to say the word depression next. Um, so we had this episode about depression mm-hmm. and in it, I kind of like passed just for like a moment was like, yeah. And then I worked with this nutritionist and it like radically changed the whole landscape of my mental health and just looked at me like, what are you, what are you saying? Yeah. And then people, there was like the most thing that people have ever messaged me about of like, what are you talking about and what happened and tell me more. And so I sent them all your links, but I've been wanting to just like bring you here and be like, here she is. Yeah. Have the good thing. Yeah. 
Awesome. And, and so tell me, how do you guys know each other? Like, where did this relationship begin? Um, I think we met at church probably like maybe 11 or 12 or so years ago. Yeah. Long, long yeah. ago. Okay. Um, and then Danny worked in the office of like a pediatrician at, um, or in Santa Barbara who was like highly regarded and her name was everywhere in the mouths of preschool parents. Okay. And so then, um, I started to hear from preschool parents, oh, my family doesn't get sick anymore. And I was like, well, that's really interesting because your children get me sick all the damn time. <laughs> um, yeah. And all these teachers a hundred percent of the time. Yeah. And then it turned out that it was you. So it was this like lovely circle of like, oh, you're keeping these people well. Um, and then we brought Danny in to come talk to the teachers at our school. And you talked for like 45 minutes and maybe five out of the 10 of us were like, hi, can we give you money? And yeah. you just teach us everything. That's amazing. <laughs> yeah. That's so cool. And then did you start working one-on-one -on -one with her at that point? Okay. Yeah. And the thing that, I mean, I, I'm going to like probably sing your praises this whole podcast, but one of the things that super <laughs> blew my mind was we met like once mm -hmm. and you asked me tons of questions, questions that doctors never ask. Mm -hmm. Like you asked me about my period and my sleep mm -hmm. and my family history and like how my mom is and like, what does it feel like this or does it feel like this? Mm -hmm. And like, we just sat down like me and you and Connor for maybe mm -hmm. an hour Mm -hmm. And, um, and then you wrote up this protocol for me. And then like, I've asked you a lot of questions since then, but like, we only met that one time mm -hmm. and it's like, so completely changed the way that my body functions. That's amazing. Like magic. Yeah. That's and so that's cool. actually my goal. I don't want to see people over and over again. Cause there's way too many people and I can't manage everybody, which is also why yeah. I put all my care into packages. Um, yeah. because that's awesome because it's actually it so accessible. Mm-hmm. And it's actually simple. Like, Lane, wouldn't you say it's not complicated? Um, it's not it's complicated. Just, yeah. It's not readily available. I, I mean, it right. is, but it's it's also messy on Google. <laughs> yes. Um, and it feels scary. It's complicated mm -hmm. to, it can be emotionally complicated to feel like, oh, I'm so buried under my own ignorance about this. Like, how could I ever get the amount of knowledge that I need? And the stakes feel so high. And so there, I would say it's complex on that side. Mm -hmm. um, but like really when you've like relaxed into it and uh, have some energy from some protein and can get calm, mm -hmm. it like feels, it's Your brain can grasp very simple. It. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So I want to get, speaking of that, like very into the like, food brain mood connection with you but i Beautiful. think it would be nice to hear from you first about like your journey with nutrition because yeah. i find that really compelling like your yeah. personal story mm -hmm. yeah so uh i i got i'll just go all the way back to my childhood which is sort of how mm -hmm. i ended up in pediatrics but i had a generally healthy childhood until the end of high school um and at this point in time i'm like my family's just classic standard american and we just honestly don't i remember there was a trader joe's that was like as healthy as health food got we didn't go yeah. there, you know, um, I started having one after the other digestive problems that led me through three years of chronic illness. I, I, I had to drop out of school. I was at Stanford hospital. I'd seen 13 specialists. I I'd had zero help, um, or improvement. I was only going downhill, um, even more. And, and eventually I honestly had exhausted all of that Western medicine had to offer me. I'd had all the tests. I I've had all the drugs, you know, and I was just taking everything because I'm thinking every single thing you're offering me is it, you know? Um, mm -hmm. and I got to a naturopathic doctor because I'm just doing my own research as a bedridden, you know, ex college student. Like this is, this is not my life, you know? Right. Um, and really in a matter of weeks of radically changing my diet to what my unique and personalized needs were at that time, I was like giving my health back. So it was so miraculous. Um, I had to go into the field. Like I had to start helping people. Um, it wasn't this like gradual complicated thing. I, I just needed somebody to tell me what to do and actually know what they were talking yeah. about, you know, um, which is what I feel like it is like why it becomes simple, um, with what I've done with my work. Because I also know like in your case, Lane, you're giving everything I'm telling you to you. But when you have a vulnerable, especially a new mom or a mom that's mm -hmm. extra sensitive because she has a sick baby, that's like a whole nother level of like Google search doesn't work. You know, you need yeah. somebody that has expertise and experience to lay it out for you and check in with you and be available for your millions of questions. Yeah. I mean, honestly, naturopathic medicine is amazing, but you don't talk to your doctor. It, 
after you see them, you know, and like you said, you had questions after for me. Well, who wouldn't? It's a life change. The way that you're shopping, the way that you're cooking, the way that you're eating, all of it is a life change, you know? Um, so yeah, so I, I, I went into pediatrics because I knew anywhere in my pediatric journey, which is about for us, it's about age three to 18, because I call one to two still part of your perinatal years. We'll go over that. Um, if anybody had said, Hey, enzymes, Hey, probiotics, Hey, like gluten or casein and actually told me what to do about gluten or casein, you know, I probably would never have had to go through anything that I went through. Mm -hmm. And then my experience starting in pediatrics was, oh my God, these kids are as sick as adults. Pediatric medicine today looks like adult medicine. They have diabetes, mm -hmm. autoimmune diseases, gut issues like you've never seen before. A anxiety, you know, OCD habits, not let alone autism spectrum altogether. But like our kids today are obviously not receiving the level of care that they should be because they shouldn't be sick. Like our adults shouldn't be sick either, but that's a whole different issue. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, actually but if we, went I mean, back. If we started with kids, we wouldn't have sick adults. Right. 100%, 100%, exactly. And, and that, that was me. I was a sick college student that it could have been prevented mm -hmm. had my parents, you know, had access to somebody who was gonna give them sound and tried and true holistic nutrition information. So yeah. I actually went backwards in pediatrics. This is how we ended up in preschool and then even further backwards. but. Because I was like, this is this is okay to go backwards for these kids, you know, healing today that's called in the integrated medicine world, but it's easier to prevent. It's so easy to just like give your child a nutrient dense diet from the start to start solids and introduce food the right way to, to include therapeutic grade probiotics, methylated B vitamins. These are all some of my top major everyday for everybody things. Um, mm -hmm. And then I really went backwards from toddlers because our toddlers are, are so sick today. And I had to see all the newborns. <laughs> I was like, give me the babies. Let's get them started as yeah. soon as possible. Give me the pregnant moms. And all the way back to preconception couples is honestly my favorite thing to do is sit down with a couple who's not thinking about conceiving for one to two years. You get both mm -hmm. of them extraordinarily healthy. And then you help mm -hmm. them conceive an extraordinary healthy baby. Yeah, that's beautiful. Yeah, that I think that if there was anything that I was like, this woman is a wizard, was like watching you do that with <laughs> one of my coworkers who had been who had really been struggling to conceive, and yeah. uh, we yeah. all heard you talk together and started to work with you, and then we got this beautiful little friend yeah. who mm -hmm. showed up. It was like just so special to so get to cool. see yeah. the the shift there. Yeah. Which just feels so good when people want a baby and then they get one. Mm -hmm. I know it is. It's, it's the most beautiful fulfillment there could probably be. Yeah. So sweet. Yeah. So obviously we could talk to you for like 500 hours because everything <laughs> that you're so passionate about is like so specific to our audience and yeah. to yeah. each of our lives. But I want, we only have this one <laughs> instead mm -hmm. of 500. Yes. <laughs> so I just wanted to like really hone in on the, like the mental health of a yes. woman mm. piece yes. today. Beautiful. Um, yes. So for me, when I started to talk to you, it was the first time that it was like clear to me, even that my brain like was part of my body mm. and that like my emotions and my mood and my feelings, mm. like my experience of my day was coming out of my body. Like I had attributed all of my anxiety and all of my like my mental health struggles, but even just like my energy levels and my con my like level of conflict with people around me and my ability to be patient, like all of those things, I had attributed them to like emotional and personality. And like, mm -hmm. I thought that those were like me, yeah. but they weren't, I, had, I hadn't connected them in any way to like, these are functions of my body, my, like my, my yeah. physical body. My brain is an organ. Like I, I thought my brain mm -hmm. was my mind. And mm -hmm. I thought that my mind was the source of my yeah. feelings and like, my yeah. patience level was connected to my character, not yeah. like, oh, ha have my I body, yeah. eaten enough food to mm -hmm. like have what I need yeah. today? Um, mm -hmm. So if you could just talk like at a really at the first 100%. basic level about like the way that those things affect each other. Yeah. And I actually love that you really point that out because I think when it comes to parenting and mommying and you're not well in your mind, mm -hmm. which again comes down to your health and your nutrition, you can't do it well. You don't have what's needed to have a strong and well-supported mental health mind all around. So yeah, I mean, the brain is essentially, let's put it in the dumbest down form possible, a big blob of fat. 
what do women cut out first when they want to be healthy? Fat. That's- and then they go for cholesterol rich fats. The, the, so cholesterol and omega threes become the most important fats in this blob of fat that we're fueling and we're feeding. Again, what do women cut out when they want to be healthy? Or maybe they never ate it all in the first place. Red meat, eggs, butter, the richest nutrient dense sources of cholesterol. So this is actually, this is where some of the fear comes in. And, and on my part, when women trend more vegetarian um, or more like the common, what we think is healthy, um, and they're mm-hmm. cutting out these foods that directly fuel the brain. We see the same thing in preschool children when we run their labs. And this is probably because they're coming from a generation of women who didn't eat those three foods regularly. I mean, I recommend three eggs every day in your entire perinatal window. That's two years before you conceive the year of your conception and the first two years of your baby's life. I recommend like four to five tablespoons of animal fat and red meat four to five times a week. You know, even if you're eating those foods, you probably don't think it should be that much, you know? What if, and you what fall if you're in- a parent? What if you're a parent of like toddlers three and up? I know we have an, a big audience no. of toddler parents. It's same thing. Yeah, a hundred percent. And I think a lot of these women are maybe preparing maybe for another baby, you know, or sure. or guess what? They're just recovering from nursing yeah. a number of years after. And and those are huge. That's a huge window of time where recovery uh, for mom is so important. So that five, ten years later, when perimenopausal time starts to hit, she doesn't tank and go absolutely insane. Because hormones are hormones actually the same foods that fuel the brain fuel the hormones, which women can really look at both the brain and the hormones um, I when they feel insane. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, where do where do your hormones live? Like, all over. If, really? Not from your like, what's the source? Well, least... I mean, your adrenals make fifty percent of them, and then your your okay. your until they give out, your female organs make the other fifty percent. Okay. Um, all of your ovaries and, and everything hanging out down in your lady area. Um, mm-hmm. Otherwise, it, and then your adrenals take over when you enter perimenopausal. Well, if you've been running around, which who isn't today as an American mm-hmm. woman, all of her 20s, 30s, 40s, right? Um, and you haven't been eating that well, right? Then you're <laughs> you're going to tank so hard when, you're, when your ovaries and female organs give out and your adrenals take over making your hormones. Mm-hmm. Hormones are the same as brain. Precursors are protein, amino acids from protein, has to be animal protein if you want to get enough, and then cholesterol. Cholesterol is the precursor for all neurotransmitters in the brain. That's like GABA, serotonin, phenylalanine, you name it. We'll go on and on and on. And then and all hormones, all steroid hormones, estrogen, progesterone, even testosterone, DHEA. You need all of them and they need to be well balanced. Okay. Let's, can we, can I ask you questions about cholesterol? Because that's, yeah. I don't know what that is in the positive sense. Like it just only is a thing in commercials that are like low in cholesterol. So buy these Cheerios. Right. So like, what do you, can you help us understand a little bit more, I guess about let's do fats and cholesterols. Cause those are yeah. both words that like all marketing has taught us to feel stressed yeah. about. So without yeah. a level of knowledge, it sort of feels like, well, then should I, ch- I mean, chips have fats and cholesterols, right? Like, yeah, right. What are, so what are the, what's yes. the good version of good and exactly. bad of that? That's a great question. Yeah. So overall, we're going back to traditional eating. We're going back to what for all of time we could make without a factory. Today, it could be made in a factory, but like it, it can be made without. It's been made traditionally. We were eating it forever. People didn't die of heart attacks. You know, um, women probably were not literally like psychotic and all over the place. Mm-hmm. So in terms of fats, we're looking at olive oil, grass-fed butter, grass-fed ghee, coconut oil and all the animal fats, which no one touches today, unless you've entered the paleo keto trend world, but that would be like tallow and suet and duck fat. (laughs) Um, And of course, all so plant foods do not contain cholesterol. Those are still healthy fats, which would be like the olive oil and the coconut oil, but you cannot minimize or negate the cholesterol, which fats, which are animal fats, right? Okay. and the richness of cholesterol in these foods like, doesn't even compare to anything else. Um, and what really- is, What about fish? I know some vegetarians who, yeah. well, I guess they would be pescatarians. Does that, right. by adding fish, does that then, are they good? Or would it would it be more beneficial for their mind? I mean, my experience- Yeah. Yeah, my experience in looking at labs, again, I want clinical data. 
Like sure. my practice has been very clinical. I look at adrenal panels, hormone panels, blood panels, all through pregnancy as well and perinatal years and, and following after. Um, it, it, it's, it honestly just doesn't cut it. Um, okay. so, some women today, I, I'm actually one of them, even consuming, I mean, I buy ghee in a tub that's seven pounds, wow. but we seem to have some genetic disposition to actually incredibly high high levels of cholesterol coming in from our diets to actually maintain enough. Now, if we can okay, go to the like is, scary cholesterol part. Yeah, what's the difference? Um, yeah. Why is some good? Okay, so um, honestly, even like a hundred years ago, the panel of what was acceptable and good is, was completely different. So medicine just keeps lowering the number that's considered healthy. And that's of course, because their fear is that they think cholesterol is directly re related to a heart attack, which has been debunked in a lot of ways by integrative medicine. But um, women, especially postmenopausal, could have had like a cholesterol between 250 and 300 and it was considered normal. Because mm -hmm. again, their female organs are no longer making their hormones. So the demand comes from nutrition. Their adrenals don't do, they don't make it on their own the way that the female organ system does. They demand nutrition to make hormones. They don't just like make it out of thin air. Okay. Um, so, and, and again, today we really figured out that cholesterol, the, the high, the fake high cholesterol that is bad, which is more related to diabetes and other issues than it is necessarily a heart attack is from consuming white starches and sugar, which clogs the liver. And the liver's job is to turn over and expel extra cholesterol. Well, when the liver has become exhausted and clogged and fatty because of white sugar and white flour, which we don't usually connect to fatty liver because we hear fatty liver, you know? Mm -hmm. uh -huh. But white sugar and white flour are some of the most detrimental foods on the human planet, modern processed, hormone stealers, neurotransmitter stealers. And when they clog the liver, it can't get that, that healthy level of cholesterol out of the body. And you actually see the triglycerides go up. So if someone actually looks at their cholesterol panel, you actually are only concerned about the total cholesterol if the triglycerides are soaringly high, which would okay. never happen if you consumed a nutrient dense diet, which wouldn't have white flour and white sugar, you know? Once in a while, yes, go have a pizza, but you don't bring those things into your home. You don't bake with them. You don't cook with them. Um, mm. They're just, they're empty, they're void altogether. And they have so many negative effects to the entire human body. What's a, what's something we would use instead of those things that would, cause I'm thinking of like so many friends I know that's just, the, that's what we were raised with. That's just what yeah. we know to get. What should we be doing instead? Instead of white flour, I would actually aim to bake with like almond flour or coconut okay. flour. And you're looking for more of like a paleo or a baked good recipe. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of sugar, I would use honey, real raw honey, maple syrup, um, molasses. And then in terms of baking, if you wanted a powder, you would use coconut sugar. Okay. Um, or you could even trend like the, um, the monk fruit, pure plain monk fruit. And stevia okay. is good for like sweetening tea, not baking with or, or anything okay. like that. Tea or coffee would be like the only things with stevia. Okay. Okay. That's helpful. Okay, <laughs> cool. So the cholesterol, if I'm understanding this correctly, like the cholesterol is more correlated along with some other things to the scary stuff that we've been told. It's not just that like the cholesterol is making the bad thing. Like the cholesterol is actually not the bad thing. It's in conjunction with some other indicators that you're in a danger It's the zone. white flour and the white sugar that have falsely elevated your cholesterol because they've caused you to have a fatty liver. Okay. Wow. Okay. That makes a lot cholesterol of Cholesterol rich foods will give you a healthy level of cholesterol, okay. not a high. Got it. And I mean, um, I look at cholesterol panels all day long to walk women through the entire panel and explain to them why your doctor's telling you this is high, you know, and I'm not like saying anything against what your doctor said. I'm not a doctor, but I am trained to look at labs and mm -hmm. tell you, hey, triglycerides, let's talk about that number. Cholesterol that's total, let's talk about that number. Let's talk about your HDL, let's talk about your LDL, right? And how does this correlate to your diet and your nutrition? Yeah. yeah. But yeah. across the board, infertility, postpartum depression, anxiety, even just in women later, children with anxiety, depression, sleep issues, autism, ADHD, 
extremely low cholesterol when you look at the labs. Mm. You flood them with the foods that I talked about. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it can be that simple sometimes wow. because you're also getting the amino acids for protein that I talked about. It's protein and cholesterol and fats, and that comes from the red meat and the eggs. Okay. Okay. So then could you take us kind of chronologically, like from the viewpoint of supporting your brain of like, I'm a, I'm a person who I have not given my nutrients to a baby at this point. If I were to do that, <laughs> this is what would happen. Yeah. And like, now I've had this baby and I've, the baby's out. And, mm -hmm. but like, if you could walk us through sort of like the brain journey yeah. almost mm -hmm. of that and 100%. like supporting the yeah. brain nutritionally. And maybe just for context, um, even for our listeners, we lead a community of moms. Many of them are struggling with some version of what looks like mental illness, some, some mm -hmm. anxiety, depression, trying to find their way back during pregnancy, but also postpartum uh, back to yes. this sense of like peace. And I know who mm -hmm. I am and I want to feel well. And so just mm -hmm. as we're understanding what's going on, giving, giving them some, some steps that they can understand, like, here's what we could shift yeah. to help you feel more like yeah. yourself. Because I, I imagine if we're talking to fragile moms, um, mm -hmm. The, the potential for overwhelm is very easy. And so, yes. yeah, taking all of this into like, okay, okay, listener who is struggling today, here's what you can do yes. um, to feel okay. Yes. Yes. Awesome. Exactly. And one, this is what I do with women all the day long. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like yeah. you are not alone. I've sat with a million women in your shoes, right? Mm -hmm. And I do know how to help you if you will let me help you. And you do have to help yourself. I'm not going to come into your kitchen. I'm not going to force you to feed, you know, mm -hmm. um, but we also have countless testimonies. So you can feel like, okay, let's, let's, let's take the step forward, you know, mm -hmm. towards helping yourself. Um, but so, yeah, in terms of pregnancy, if your anxiety and your depression increase or start, you're obviously dealing with hormones at very high levels you never have before. Right. Um, and the, 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 you know, probably the biggest concern with this entire time period is, is the postpartum depletion that happens so easily today. Women are generally not taught the amount of nutrition that they need every single day in pregnancy because the demand is so extremely high. Mm -hmm. um, and, and your needs are every day and you can't let them roll over because you can't eat enough to catch mm -hmm. up, right? I mean, it's just unbelievable. And we have in my prenatal package, I've laid out a nutritional needs checklist, which I tell women, you don't have to look at every day, but you need to look at it and you need to study it and you need to go, whoa, that's what it takes every day to grow and develop my little baby and fuel your body and your brain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because yeah, when postpartum hits and you've just delivered and now you need to make milk, but you also need to recover from everything that you just gave to your baby. You know, you also might've felt very sick in your pregnancy, which is very normal. So you're even more just utterly exhausted. Now you have a little baby who demands your attention at all times, you know, mm -hmm. which can honestly just be very overwhelming in, its, in itself. And you actually need so many more calories and protein and fats to make milk than you even did when you were pregnant. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that postpartum depression and anxiety just equal postpartum depletion. So mm -hmm. again, a mom who's just so depleted in cholesterol and B12, probably in her vitamin D and just her protein needs in general, can't fight that easily against, you know, the, the totally overwhelmed, which leads to being highly nervous and anxious. You're not sleeping generally mm -hmm. at all. Um, women in our culture don't lay down a nap. And if they do, mm -hmm. they feel weird about doing it, you know? Mm -hmm. And you need to sleep every time your baby is sleeping in the very beginning. Mm -hmm. Women also feel like they should get dressed, look great, and be out with their baby a week mm -hmm. later. Mm -hmm. Traditional cultures kept women in bed for sometimes 40, 50, 60 days in bed. And I mean in bed, meaning that there was a village around them who was making their food, you know, assisting them to the bathroom, to use the bathroom, bringing them their baby and then putting their baby down, you know, mm -hmm. and we're just not used to none of these. We're not used to any of this. We don't mm -hmm. practice this. We don't feel good about it usually if we do do it, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and so it really leads to women feeling awful across yeah. the board, you know. Um, 
But my experience in flooding these women with nutrition, and of course, that's why I love preconception care, because if you flood your brain so early and you've built up all your nutrient stores, I mean, you can even feel okay about eating what you need to in your first trimester when you feel mm -hmm. horrible. Yeah. yeah, because you have stores and your body's actually utilizing your stores in those really early weeks. Anyways, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. generally speaking, you're already going to be in the habit. We've already found a prenatal that works for you well. And I don't have a one fits all. I have many because sometimes they're too strong or they have iron or they're constipating. And mom's well-being is equally as important as fueling and developing a growing baby. You Can know, you say that one more time, please. <laughs> yeah mom's well-being and i also include comfort mm -hmm. is equally important as supporting the nutrition of a growing and developing baby mm -hmm. because if you have a woman who is extremely constipated has horrific morning sickness is highly anxious jittery unsettled or unmotivated apathetic and depressed yeah. these do not equal a happy healthy little you know mm -hmm. in the long run yeah. There, and we need to be take. I, I, that's what I have loved about my care. My initial was every mom, every baby, and it has mm -hmm. to be both. You cannot give care to one and not give care to the other. Yeah. And if you just, if you don't think about mom in pregnancy, then mom will end up depleted postpartum, mm -hmm. which, which affects baby horribly. And you end up with a not happy, healthy baby. You know, if you don't have a well supported, strong mom, it's very difficult to make milk if you don't have radically high levels of nutrients. And, 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 and also if mom just feels so anxious and her body is not going to make milk to nurse the baby because that is overwhelming yeah. and the body is made for survival. So right. it's going to so, do whatever it takes. I feel like all the things that you're describing are things that a lot of women, when they're in pregnancy or like going into it, like we just think like it's a roll of the dice. Like, oh, I hope I'm not super morning sick. Oh, I hope I don't get postpartum uh -huh. depression. Oh, no, I'm just like a person who is anxious. So I just want to like bring those things back into the connection of like, these are not yeah. random accidental mm. things. And that's not to say that it's no. anybody's like fault mm -hmm. that they find themselves in right. a place, but just that there are things like how to much be control done. Do we have? There, is, there is like power in your hands in order yeah. to make this more predictable mm -hmm. and more manageable and to recover from it. Like there are things that you yeah. can do. Mm -hmm. It's not just like, oh no, I'm yeah. one of the unlucky ones. Yeah. Yeah. And when I, and when I, you know, women go through my packages and my packages come with me. So you reach out yeah. whenever you need. And I am so happy to get back to you. And most of my moms actually get me in a voice memo oh, because yeah. I, how can you give care by texting someone? I mean, or emailing just doesn't work for me. Yeah. Um, and so, and I actually love, I mean, you know, Lane, I love building connections with all of my moms. I mean, for all these years in my twenties, thirties, I had mom friends, you know, mm -hmm. because That's I'm just awesome. friends with all the moms I work with. Do the same. But, um, <laughs> the, the, yeah, when you, it, it, like, I tell women all the time, this is the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. and maybe it will work for you, but I'm not going to give you a hundred things to do today because yeah. you might not need them all and you're going to be overwhelmed and you won't do them. Let's be realistic, you know? Yes. But it's always the tip of the iceberg. And my moms learn, reach out to me again. If you don't feel better, you know, send me a message and don't wait because I had something to offer you, yeah. you know? Yeah. So I yeah. love being able with what we've created with Happy Healthy Littles. You buy one of our packages and you're in forever. And I want to help you because I've worked with thousands of women in this perinatal window and, of course, the pediatric years that follow. Yeah. You know, we have our well woman and our littles package, which I wasn't planning on creating. I thought, ooh, perinatal years, this is all we're going to focus on. And my moms are like, I'm, I'm done making my babies and I don't want to go somewhere else. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, well... I have it. So yes, I'll throw it on paper for you. Yeah, awesome. So we do stand to the entire window of mom and baby life because once you're raising your littles, it really gets back to taking care of you. Mm -hmm. um, there's so much that you cannot do in terms of adrenal care or really intense hormonal balance or even detox um, in or gut healing mm -hmm. um, in that perinatal window because in a lot of ways it's not safe at all for baby. And you just have to kind of surrender to the fact that, that the priority is, is what's safe for your baby at that time. But when you're done, then we dig so deep and we get back into mom mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways that we weren't able to yeah. in those other years. What is, what is adrenal care mean? I don't even know what to picture. <laughs> what is, what is that? Yeah. <laughs> 
Um, well, the best care would be you actually get tested and we find out exactly what your cortisol pattern looks like. So your adrenals are two organs that sit on top of your kidneys. They're so tiny and yet they're so powerful. Okay. Like in the back. Um, yeah, in the they're back. back. Uh-huh. Okay. They're little, right on top of your kidneys. So there's kidneys and then adrenals right on top. And they are responsible for making half of all of your hormones and all of your cortisol. Hmm. Cortisol is like literally how you function well and optimally wow. all day. And so you have a circadian rhythm of your cortisol. It's called a cortisol pattern. And it starts during the day and it kind of goes down a little bit. And then when that is off, that is like <laughs> exactly why you feel terrible. Hmm. Whether you're very high and you're revved and you're sweaty palms and you're just so highly anxious and irritable also hmm. and just testy all around or you're really low and you're literally can't get out of bed and you're so depressed and you'd rather just sleep and you're unmoted about everything. That's, um, that's and you can't find the joy that you obviously deserve. Okay. And that's, that would be a low cortisol state. And then the anxious, the hyperactivity, anxious feeling that's like when there's yes. too much happening. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can also end up very anxious when you're low because you just can't do life. You just don't have mm -hmm. strength to handle anything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that can also lead to feeling anxious and overwhelmed. I mean, the, the two go hand in hand. Yeah. I, I do this thing now that I know came from like the period of life when we started working together, but I also was like seeing a therapist and I had a lot of, had a lot of shit going yeah. on. So there's like a lot coming in and I don't remember if this is a you thing, but when I feel that like sort of hot feeling in my back, I just like lay down for 10 yeah. minutes yeah. and I do nothing except for just yeah. like lay on my back. And yeah. I literally can feel the moment where I'm like, oh, I'm yeah. better. And yeah. there's like more energy and I don't have that feeling between my like shoulder blades and that tension and that yeah. like, there, it just is like, uh, and it is literally 10 minutes. Yeah. Like you yes. I check and I'm like, oh, yes. this is when I, I feel better. Like there's yep. a recovery. Mm. Okay. That is it. Yeah. That that's me. And I call it adrenal rest, which I stole from Dr. James Wilson. So we'll give him credit. He termed adrenal fatigue and has just made the world available to women that because your doctors have nothing to offer you. And, and because cortisol needs to be tested in saliva and doctors don't test saliva. And my adrenal mm -hmm. panel comes with hormones also because you need to look at both, you know, um, but once mm -hmm. you have an adrenal panel, you can literally look at what you feel like through the day and we can know exactly what to give you and support you. And adrenal mm -hmm. rest is free. <laughs> we should all be doing it yes. between 2 and 5 p.m. Lay flat on your back. Picture your adrenals laying in a hammock. And this is during mm -hmm. a time where they really need that rest, you know. Um, and basically, they're just recovering. They're just recouping because they manage all of the stress that you deal with all day long. They never get a break at all, you know, and they're working on recovering so late for 10 minutes. That's what that yeah. is. Yeah. So, so anywhere between like 10 and a half hour, whatever you need, okay. do not get up okay. if you do not feel like getting up and do not fight sleep, but don't, you can't make yourself sleep anyways, but like, don't feel like you have to nap to adrenal rest. It's just the positioning and really that time frame that allows for the adrenals to just get a boost altogether, which mm. I mean, a lot of cultures nap in the afternoon. Like, it's just so oh, yeah. normal mm -hmm. to lay down. Mm -hmm. yeah. Ours is not like mm -hmm. that. <laughs> and we got a lot of crazy women. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. And is it those same kinds of foods, the fats, high in cholesterol, high protein that support the adrenals? 100%. 100%. So, yeah, when we look at adrenal care, we're looking at lifestyle changes, for one, which would be like your stress level and your go, go, go and your commitments and your yes and your sleep pattern and your rest, um, as well as dietary which is, yeah, 100% fats and proteins, stabilize your blood sugar, um, and then would be supplementation. Because today, honestly, we need it. We need specific and um, individualized supplementation to really get ourselves feeling our top-notch best. But the two yeah. so go together. And I have not seen it done well when women fight taking supplements because they want to get it through their food. Our food does not have the amount of nutrition that it used to. Our bodies do not digest and assimilate nutrition the way that they used to because they're weak and our guts are very, very imbalanced. Um, mm -hmm. And we have genetic mutations. We don't methylate well, the VDR gene, the glutathione gene. I mean, we just, we're not the same. <laughs> um, and the supplements really kind of take it up a whole nother level. Yeah. Will, will you talk about nutrient density in food? Mm -hmm. That reminds me that we haven't really defined that yeah. term. And yeah. um, part of what people can do now is 
go purchase foods that are 100%. highly nutrient dense now. 100%. Mm -hmm. So yeah, all of my packages include a nutrient dense handout, which, which functions like a shopping guide. And literally this handout alone could change your entire life. And we actually have all of our packages now on a new app. And so you can pull it up in two seconds when you're in the grocery store. And I have proteins on the top left because they're the absolute most important. I've got fats right next to them. These are your, the, the only thought really I care about when you go to eat is protein and fats. Starches, you don't need as much of. And if you filled yourself up on starches, you're never going to get enough protein and fats. Cool. Fruits and vegetables. Because you're full. Exactly. You just feel exactly. too full to eat more exactly. of the thing that you need. Okay. Yes. Yes. Uh, yeah, like a whole bowl of brown rice, very filling because it's very fiberful, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and then you wouldn't be able to eat. I mean, women kind of especially today can only eat so much. <laughs> so we need to get the, the fats and the proteins in more than anything else. Um, and then, of course, fruits and veggies are our micro, micro nutrients. Um, but they, they, they're great. They have antioxidants and good fiber, but they would never meet needs to fuel our brains. Mm -hmm because they don't supply those amino acids or those fatty acids that directly okay. fuel brain adrenals and hormones. And amino acids are like the building blocks of proteins. Protein. Like they're the building blocks of human life. Like yeah. things are sentient because we're built out of amino acids. Mm -hmm. So yes. when we're eating, this is me just like, like self-talking what I needed to fill in for my own brain of like <laughs> protein matters because it's built out of the literal blocks that like make your body run. Yeah. So you have to get more of those in there in order to like support your brain's function. Yeah. And then fats come around your neurotransmitters and like yeah. allow that firing to function yes. properly. And that's yes. what makes me feel better. Like I needed yes. it to be <laughs> this, this like preschool level of, yeah. of understanding in order to be like connecting. Okay. I, I feel better when I eat meat or eggs or even just like butter and some good honey when I can't actually yeah. get like I'm not Very hungry. I'm not hungry anymore, but I still need this mm -hmm. feeling in my brain. Like yeah. this little bit of fat and protein is going to support my brain at its like building block level. And then it's like things moving level. Like I almost think about yes. the fat as like helping everything move around yeah. inside my brain. Yes. So yeah, fats are lubricating. Take me to my plates, like my plate yes. of food. I'm a mom of three young kids who protest yeah. a lot of foods. I'm trying to eat. I own a small business. Like everything is fast and I got to take care of five people, not one. Yeah. What, what am I putting on my plate? Cause I, yeah. I feel like I'm hearing all of it, but I don't know how to bring it to my table. hundred percent. Well, uh, I actually think that all moms should utilize their crock pot, which we're so okay. used to thinking is like casseroles. Um, but I actually okay. created a slow cooker favorites. Like it's like a recipe add on. Um, because I think if you can have one part of the meal in a crock pot so that dinner is that much easier, because really yeah. dinner, dinner is, dinner is most people's heartiest meal. Um, mm -hmm. and you're obviously going to go into a fast till you break up or wake up for breakfast. And so it should really contain whole grains. Okay. Um, uh, which usually will have the fat on them, the meat, which has been cooked in the fat and vegetables, which are usually cooked in fat too. <laughs> so cool. fat okay. is really just goes on top of everything. Right. And in my slow cooker, so you're saying phase, like yeah. my meat has been cooked in olive oil and so have my vegetables. Yep. And on top of this yep. barley or brown rice is like yes. butter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or even like vegetables that have been roasted in ghee um, or that's mm -hmm. the best place to use animal fats um, and plenty of good mineral rich salt, lots of seasoning. Kids usually will eat, you know, roasted carrots. Um Roasted beets can actually come out really sweet. Even sweet potatoes mm -hmm. are another great alternative or potatoes. Um, mm -hmm. I also think for kids in terms of that plate sauces, and I love primal kitchen. Um, you, you'll notice I did not mention avocado oil in an, in, a, in one, of, cause it's not traditional. It's not super okay. harmful. It's a little bit like grapeseed. It's not high omega six, like the harmful modern processed oils, like soy, safflower, sunflower, all down that list, but it's not traditional. So I don't want you to bring it into your home and cook with it. I want you to cook okay. with the ones I listed and they're in their nutrient dense mm -hmm. handout. But the best available in the store to buy is going to have, all, excuse me, avocado oil. And that's Primal Kitchen, okay. which is a okay. thousand times better than all the other condiments that are made with the inflammatory oils, directly inflammatory oils, like the soy, canola, safflower, sunflower. Yeah, inflammation. Um, 
do you know where you can get some Primal Kitchen sauces in our area right now? Is my absolute favorite grocery outlet. Really? Mm-hmm. Okay. Ooh. So, so Primal Kitchen is a brand, and you're yes. saying yes, that brand. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yes. I've never heard of it. That's um, good. While I'm just talking oh about my grocery God, outlet, because ultimately I want them to sponsor my life, Danny. <laughs> um, <laughs> they, uh, grocery outlet is one of the things that has made like these protocols more affordable for mm-hmm. me, particularly yeah. the grass fed red meat. That can yes. be like it can feel very expensive yes. in other places. And I've been getting like grass fed beef and lamb at grocery outlet for like seven wow. years for like $8.99 wow. a pound. Yeah. Like it's yeah. so good. So that's yeah. just a plug for my favorite store. <laughs> I'll <laughs> do one too. We've been stocking Primal yeah. Kitchen. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, Whole Foods, because now they're owned by Amazon and their prime discounts. I don't love Amazon, I'm not going to lie. But their prime discounts have made organic food mm-hmm. so affordable. Yep. So that's another because yes, I get it, especially if you have a family of five or more. Yeah, it's very sure. expensive. Yeah. Um, but what we need guys, to prioritize. You, you it. haven't you haven't mentioned dairy yet in the conversation. Yeah, what are, what's your take on dairy products? Dairy needs to be the highest quality, which all okay. everything from a cow needs to be grass fed. When the, when the okay. animals are fed grass, we have a beautiful product, high in omega-3s, good levels of omega-6s, which we need, all the right fatty acids. But then dairy is just individual. Many people cannot digest it um, okay. for numerous different reasons. We do, I do love it cultured. We do have a cultured dairy recipe add-on um, because you've just made the product easier to digest and you've added mm-hmm. probiotics. Um, we don't really need milk. After okay. one, you've got this big, chubby, beautiful baby that's been growing and developing optimally. If not, that's a different story. Um, mm-hmm. They just don't need milk anymore. Um, mm-hmm. Okay. Milk is hard to digest. It just it, because it's so pasteurized and raw is a whole nother world. It has to be a mom decision to make on her own. Um, but but like if you culture the milk into kefir or yogurt, or you culture the cream into cream fresh. Um, and there's high protein dairy versus high fat dairy. And that's good for a certain different number of people. And I go into this in so much detail because dairy is a little complicated, but it should yeah. not necessarily be eliminated altogether. Okay. The only okay. reason I would eliminate dairy altogether is if you have a true IgE allergy, if you have an IgG food sensitivity, which we do IgG food sensitivity testing as well, then that actually just means you can't digest it well. And we need to work on restoring your gut strength. Doesn't mean you need to eliminate the food forever. Mm-hmm. So what about, so if, if we're, we're staying away from white flour, what does this mm-hmm. mean for noodles as a whole? Cause I've got yes. kids who love noodles. Are we saying yes. no noodles at all or what kind no. of noodles are allowed? Okay. Um, just depends on your family's preferences. So there's brown rice pasta. Okay. Um, which is a little bit gummy. And then there's mm-hmm. the newer bean pastas. Okay. Um, so like you're bonza. on board with all of that. Yeah. All of them. Love them. Okay. And you've got a good sauce. And we actually have this incredible one dish pasta bake again for mom. (laughs) One dish, part of the meal ready from a crock pot, you know? Um, But uh, it's in our Littles package is one of our signature recipes. And you can use any pasta because everything else is so yummy in it. You know what I mean? Okay. Um, Because, yeah, because it is refined flour in in Mm -hmm. pastas that we're used to eating. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I want to be respectful of your time. We only have a few minutes left. Thank you. But um, I want to talk about your packages in a second. Mm -hmm. And then today, if I mean, let's say today's release day and I'm listening to this and I'm mom and I feel awful and I want to go to the grocery store Mm -hmm. right now for something that's going to help me feel better, like today, kind of now. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, like a couple of things that she should look for at her local grocery store right at the moment. Yeah. I would probably start with a rotisserie chicken that's okay. just cooked and warm and ready. Cause so you can do a thousand things with the meat. Yeah. Um, you could does take that need, chicken and you have, does it need to be organic? Does it need to be what it would ideally of- be at least free range and no toxins added chicken can get gray in labeling. Obviously, like if you are shopping like at whole foods, I don't even think they even include the, any of the toxins. I'm just going to get grayer at sprouts and more confusing at Trader Joe's. Mm-hmm. But yeah, okay. chicken is very toxic. Um, so is dairy. Like chicken, and so is meat. I mean, <laughs> it should really just be the highest quality that you can get. Free range and then organic is a whole step up for sure. 
So free range okay. chicken, at least they're roaming and they're and they're probably eating grasses and seeds, but they're probably being fed some sort of feed. Um, ideally, it would be a non-GMO feed, you know. Um, but if it's organic, they're not being fed a non-GMO feed for sure. Okay. Um, but yeah, get that rotisserie chicken, get some sweet potatoes, get some grass-fed butter. Vital Farms is incredible. Um, so is Kerrygold. Um, and whatever veggies your family will eat. <laughs> and just okay. serve that chicken and roast those sweet potatoes smothered in butter. You can even do it in the same pan as the vegetables, all smothered in butter. Um, easy, simple. You have leftover chicken and a leftover carcass. You can take that carcass and you can make a soup with the with a bone broth. We have a whole tutorial on real bone broth, one of the most important foods for adrenals, anxiety, and brain. Uh, because of the glycine and all the amino acids that are included in broth and the bio readily available uh, minerals. And then um, you can also take leftover shredded chicken. You can throw it on a salad the next day. Um, we love charcuteries um, that we make for kids. There's a few on our Instagram and then there's outlined with so many ideas in our littles package. Um, and this is like a throw together. And for littles, for lunch, it's very easy. And then mom can usually make a sandwich with high quality bread or a salad with the with the same stuff. So she's making one meal two ways, which is what we like to call it for moms. Um, it cannot be complicated, but that that's the thing. If a mom tries to complicate the meals, they're not going to happen for very long. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. It needs to be mm -hmm. simple. It needs to be doable. And, and once it becomes part of your routine, the way that you shop, the way that you cook, the way that you prepare food at home. Um, and of course, some of your meals need to be streamlined. You know, charcuterie can be done multiple times a week and it can be done so different. No one gets sick, tired and bored of it, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And our slow cooker phase has like, like you could you could eat off of it for months because it's not, they're not all like a one pot. So you have so many variations, which I talk about um, with what to do with each different recipe. Uh, but again, my goal there is one part of the meal took you 10 minutes and, and it's done. It's ready. And usually you'll have leftovers, which is also, I think, very important, especially for lunches the next day. Yes. I feel like mm -hmm. leftovers, like bone broth and leftovers are the mm -hmm. things that have made this like a doable lifestyle yeah. for me. Bone broth being a thing that can just like, again, when I'm feeling low, but I've eaten and I'm like, I can't uh -huh. just like, keep putting more food in. I just right. need something that's going to like like give me the thing that I need without being so yes. filling. Mm -hmm. um, yes. A lot of my breakfasts are like Ezekiel bread and a mug of bone broth yes. because there's Beautiful. just like, that's so easy. Yes. It's so mm -hmm. quick. I've already made the bone broth. I don't have to think yep. about anything, but yep. my, I feel awake. I feel alert. I don't feel depression. I don't feel the anxiety mm -hmm. in my body. Um, yeah. And then, and then the leftovers being able to be like, I don't have to do this every, I don't have to actually like yes. create new food every yeah. single day, multiple times a day, but I am getting protein three full good times a day with like good fat in every single yeah. meal of like three times a day. My body gets supported yeah. with like high quality protein and high quality fat. And I feel even like yeah. it's normal for me to feel normal now. Mm -hmm. And that did that's not so seem great. like a, that didn't seem possible. It was like, I would wake up occasionally and be like, Oh, I feel kind of not bad. How interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then just like, go back yeah. through these cycles of like, uh Oh, here's anxiety. It's going to be here now for three days. And yeah. then after that, it'll be three days of depression. Yeah. Feeling like there was nothing I could do about that. But now there's this like, like a baseline to start from mm -hmm. that's like, yeah. okay, I'm here. Like I, the yeah. part that is me, that is my character and my mood and my yeah. soul and my brain, like the me stuff mm -hmm. is able yeah. to live out of this body now mm -hmm. because yeah. there's like a good baseline of like, Oh, I feel nourished. Mm -hmm. Yes. So that's yes. my little testimonial. That's really good. Yeah. Um, I have the preconception package, even though I'm not planning to have babies anytime soon. Um, what it's made we have for. Some, I get some messages from people who are like, I don't have kids yet, but like we love listening to you. So I just want to say to like those people too, like there's a lot here for you. Just get to feel yeah. good. <laughs> Whoever yeah. you are in whatever stage of your life, like feeling good is available to you yep. and you deserve that. Um, the packages are available on your website, right? Mm -hmm. Which yes, you can use the, the link notes. in our bio on Instagram. Awesome. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. And are there other things that I want to say? I feel like you've so Well, maybe I can tell you a little bit about what comes with our packages. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once you snag one package, you're like in, we call it, with Happy Healthy Littles. Like I said, everything is available on the new app, which is an extraordinary experience for moms who always want to be on their phones. 
Um, we just rebranded everything. It's beautiful, fresh, and clean. And I updated and um, reviewed in detail all of my recommendations and my protocols. All my packages are laid out the same. They start with food, um, making everything possible that you need to change about your dieting, your shopping, your eating, your cooking. They all come with recipes. Most have a meal plan, the nutrient-dense diet handout, like I said, which functions like a shopping guide. And then I move into the nitty gritty. And this is where moms do not go through our packages once, but they go back and back and back and back. You utilize them for years on end, especially the littles, which is three to 18. A lot of our moms move straight from the postpartum package to the littles around one because your kid opens up their world Makes of sense. eating all together at one. Yeah. Um, but this is where I have outlined all my protocols by the topic. Um, there's usually some cute name for whatever it is for the neurotransmitters one. I think the well woman is called keeping her joy. That has my anxiety, nervousness, um, uh, as well as my insomnia, my depression, and then always has a sleep handout. There's going to be a gut care in there, hormonal balance. The well woman also includes, Hey, you want to lose those last few pounds? Well, that can get really scary. If you're going to cut nutrients that fuel your brain, let's talk about how you can do that. Well, and let's talk about mm -hmm. what metabolic imbalances you might be dealing with that are contributing, mm -hmm. um, to weight loss resistance or whatever it might be. And then, and then the end of all my packages is, is about getting your home green and clean because toxins contribute poorly to all of this picture. And like I said, my packages come with me. You have access to reaching out to me, whatever might come up. You also have access to all of our integrated testing kits, which is going to be, I talked about the adrenal and hormone panel. Um, we have the IgG food sensitivity testing. We have organic acids, which I didn't go over today. That's a whole panel for infertility and neurological issues as well as gut, antioxidants, beautiful stool study of vitamin D and omega-3, omega-6 panel. So we have a lot in terms of the so testing nice. you're not going to find at your doctor's office. Um, mm -hmm. And I also will send you with a blood panel to your regular GP because it is important. These all just look at different things. Last is that you save 15% forever on our private supplement dispensary that hosts thousands of practitioner grade supplements. You can only have access to these through a practitioner like myself. You will not find them at a health food store. And when you compare, you're, you're missing key nutrients or you're getting much lower levels at, at, at like whole foods or, or really any health food store grade supplement company. Um, and it's very easy for me to walk you through any of the care in your package and even help you get set up on full script. It really can take a matter of a minute you know, and start making dramatic changes for your body mm -hmm. and your family all around. That's I love that. I love that. And I just want to mm -hmm. say like, one of the things that is amazing is that it, it can feel scary and hard to feel like you have to change your whole lifestyle. But the mm -hmm. thing is that like, once you get rolling, you're going to feel better. So mm -hmm. everything's easier mm -hmm. when you feel better. So it's not like Everything. you in your current depleted state are going to have to do this forever. It's like, oh, actually, yeah. I'm just going to get more well, and then I will have yeah. a greater capacity to be present in my life and continue 100%. to make healthier changes. Hundred percent. So I just want, I don't want to encourage people with mm -hmm. that. Um, Beautiful, Lane. I love yeah. it. Oh, Danny, thank you so much. <laughs> You're yeah. the best. <laughs> You're the best, and people can thank follow you, for having you me, at Happy Healthy Littles. Also, yep. for like tips and tricks. And if you're ever running a sale or like those kinds of things, um, to be able to just like get a hold of some of this goodness immediately. Ugh. Yeah. I was looking at your Instagram already and it, um, it's making me now want to go home and like shift things around. And yeah. <laughs> I'm having to, this is, this is real. Maybe this is re relevant to the listener. Mm -hmm. I'm having to like manage my own panic because inside I'm like <laughs> so much of our life isn't this, and you don't hear this. Um, or when yeah. you do, you hear like it among a lot of other noise about, well, you should eat this. Yeah. Well, you should eat this. Mm -hmm. So this this conversation to me is very helpful because I see entirely how hormones and hormone issues are affecting so many people in my life. And it's like this vague, mysterious conversation yeah. around, yeah. I feel bad, but I don't know how to fix it. So listening to this, I'm like, I want to implement mm -hmm. everything you're saying but it is absolutely a lifestyle change. It's not like just one little yeah. thing. So um, yeah, so for the mom listening who feels any sort of what I feel in this moment, it's a little bit, um, I guess, just small steps. We've got to start somewhere and then take yes. the steps as we go because yeah. Absolutely. Think, yeah, it's a lot. And honestly, <laughs> if you take small steps before you know it, everything will be different. 
Yeah, that's mm-hmm. the thing. And it, yeah. I want it. Like, I want what you guys are describing. And I want it for the people I love. The, yeah. the yes. clarity yeah. of mind, the feeling yes. of control in the, like, I'm not just helpless to how bad I feel. I can do something about it. I love that. Um, so yeah. it's it's beautiful what you're doing, Danny. This is so important. And I hope that Thank this you. just grows to moms all over the world. Mm-hmm. I feel like this work mm-hmm. is absolutely what we all need. Thank you. I'm yeah. definitely busy Thank as you. ever. And we are all over the world. We're in 18 different countries. <laughs> Wild. That's so cool. Yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Yay. Well, thank you so much for your time. I'm going to keep you after this recording is done, but I just want to like be so publicly grateful to you. This has been so fun. Thank you, Lane. Okay. Thank you, ladies. Thanks. Okay. That was amazing. I have learned a lot. I am going to go home and make some changes. It's primarily, I've got kids who love noodles, white Mm -hmm. noodles. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I need to go start introducing other noodle options and see what happens. Do you want to hear a couple of like my personal hacks? Because like I do try to live this way. Um, So noodles is a big one. Um, You can still eat noodles. You but can. you can get garbanzo bean noodles. You oh, can get wait. rice, like brown rice noodles. Mm-hmm. Trader Joe's has these lentil noodles. Yep, there are them. some black bean ones. I think those are yucky. Okay. But I do the lentil noodles all the time. I love that they're red. Okay. Um, so noodles is easy. Uh, tortillas, if you just want to shift from flour to either corn or to Ezekiel tortillas. Okay. They're, they don't taste like flour tortillas. Heads up. Okay. But like you can still have things in tortilla format. Am I cutting out all mac and cheese for my children? Um, they're big mac and cheese people, but I, I understand a lifestyle yeah. change. I so want to get rid of anxiety. get garbanzo bean mac and cheese if okay. you want to. Okay. Sometimes what I do is I buy the packs of Annie's, mm-hmm. Trader, or Annie's macaroni yeah. and cheese at Costco. Sometimes I eat them. Don't tell okay. Danny. Okay. I just eat them as they are. Okay. Sometimes I take that packet out and, and I swap in kind. my good noodles that's, with their tasty powder and butter. Okay. And then it's buttery, creamy, same deal. Okay. And your children don't need to know everything. Okay. For the love. Yeah. Tell me about, I mean, they're kind of hard to trick though. Like mm-hmm. if, if I do trick them, yep. kind of hard yeah. if they don't like it. But bread, what yeah. are you doing for bread? I heard you mention in the call Ezekiel bread. Yeah, I do And then Ezekiel I think bread. people like sourdough. Isn't that healthy? Yes. Okay. Um. Yes. Not like you wouldn't go to like the regular bread section in Albertsons and just say – um. Like there's like a French's sourdough kind of a deal. Okay. That doesn't actually have like real sourdough in it. Got it. That's basically sourdough flavored bread. Oh. Um, so you would want to be getting bread that was like actually made from sourdough starter. Okay. Um, which it would be like from any kind of bakery. And that also okay. there is if you're like if you got into bread baking during COVID, yeah. um, there is an add-on in Danny's packages of like how to how make to your make own sourdough. sourdough. Um, which, I, you know, in this daunting. season of my life, can't commit to making sourdough. Dude, me neither. But I don't even have any babies. Definitely, <laughs> definitely buy sourdough. Well, I mm-hmm. do buy sourdough. But what I want to go home and do now is check how's the quality of my sourdough. Yeah. Which I don't really know how to check that. But I'll just check the ingredients. Yeah, check the ingredients. Okay. And um, anytime you're wanting to buy like local. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Like fresh. if you get it from a farmer's market yeah. or from anywhere like that. Basically – the mindset here, as I understand it, is that like I want to shift away from foods that have been taken a- out of their natural form and broken down into small pieces. Right. Right. So if someone's making it, yeah. they're using ingredients that are whole. Totally. If it's in a factory, it's possible that like a lot of corners have been cut. Totally. Um. So that kind of thinking of like, yeah. how do I get this thing in its more original form? Totally. And then I have some meat things that I want to say. Tell me. Because this is where I get my meat. It. There is – when you shift out of buying just like the cheapest, tastiest food, there is like a uh, – there's a financial chunk that happens yes. a lot of the time. And um, to me, I'm like – it's a non-negotiable. Like I feel so different and so much better mm-hmm. that it's just not – I'm not – Yeah. You, I've heard you, it somewhere just, said like you're going to invest money into your health either preventatively by eating more quality stuff yes, 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 or yes. later retroactively trying to fix all these problems mm-hmm. that have happened because yeah. we lived like that. Yeah. So yeah, you're investing so, into your health. But I also don't, I'm not a person who likes to spend a lot of money. Sure. Grocery outlet. You mm-hmm. will hear me plug grocery. You, you have you have now heard oh, yeah, me yeah. plug grocery right. outlet again. Mm-hmm. So I get grass-fed beef at grocery outlet. Mm-hmm. I also get it at Costco. I get the organic Costco ground beef and at most Costco's in Southern California, I don't know about other places, they sell bison, ground bison. And 
ground bison tastes like ground beef. And if you feel like it doesn't, just cut it. Like do half and half for yourself. Mm. Um, Bison, lamb, those kinds of things, uh, they just don't – they're not farmed the same way that beef is. Hmm. So they tend to be a little safer. Like usually they just don't – they're not like farmed in those like big – monolithic farming how kinds do you of ways. and danny feel about bacon great great okay oh, great about i mean bacon? i know that it has to do with like quality and mm-hmm. all, all of that but yeah. i just didn't know okay yeah. but bacon is like a lovely way to My kids love fats. bacon yeah mm-hmm. if i could integrate bacon into other recipes mm-hmm. i think that then they'd be more open to that yeah absolutely okay. and organic chicken is also really affordable at costco mm. so when i go to costco i get ghee i get organic chicken organic ground beef organic ground turkey Mm -hmm. and um that's where i get my olive oil Mm. all of these kinds of things that were mentioned um fish it just needs to be wild caught she didn't mention that but that you would find that in her protocols okay sometimes you can get wild caught salmon at costco Mm -hmm. um but that's just some like uh, affordability hacks here in the outro that's really good Cool. And then I'm going to, while we were talking, I decided I'm going to do, um, I'll, I will put on my, at the Enquiry Co. Instagram, I will do a how to make your own bone broth um, <gasps> to coincide with when this comes out because it's actually That's very cool. easy. And people kept telling me that it was going to be so easy. Mm. And I was like, I'm not making broth, you guys. No, it like, is What do you think easy. I am, like a farm lady? No, exactly. But it's so easy. So Sean I'll show you. all the time. Yeah, we have it like weekly. And it's so good for you. It's so good. And my kids like it. But- I add bone broth to all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. So like I add bone broth to their mac and cheese, which now I have to reassess the mac and cheese thing. But just like anything that needs some liquid mm-hmm. that can be a savory flavor, yeah. I add the bone broth to it knowing that it's going to up the nutrition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. And if you feel overwhelmed, just focus on like first let's get some protein and some fat. Okay. And then work on like, okay, let's start to move some of these things out and substitute these things. But those are the two things that are going to give you that energy, like very immediate, like the energy to keep going and keep mm-hmm. trying. That's to good. me, I'm like, I got to feed myself this so that I can do other things. Perfect. Okay. Okay. Great. Yay. Great. Love you guys so much. <laughs> we love you. Liam, <laughs> did I ever tell you about the recent comment I posted on my story of someone telling me that they were uh, they just could no longer listen to our podcast Uh-oh. because <laughs> I, I died. I laughed so hard. So first, the comment starts with how much they like the podcast. Okay, <laughs> and how it's very interesting, and how they can no longer um, follow because our voices are so similar. Yeah, that they're distracted. <laughs> and I just, just sound like one person talking <laughs> to themselves. <laughs> I laugh because I'm like, I'm so sorry, guys. There's not a lot we can do about that. I'm so sorry. Um, but then I specifically love that Danny sort of looks like we could all be sisters. I think yeah, she her could voice, sit in though, us. she like, I mean, I could tell. Well, I could tell. Of course, like, <laughs> you're <laughs> looking at her. <laughs> but I just wonder, is there going to be any chance that somebody's going to get on and think that it's just yeah. one of us talking like – you know, anyway, you know, I love, I love that. I feel badly about it. There's nothing I can I do. Even when badly. I'm editing, sometimes I'm like, no, I don't feel badly. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> and I agree. I agree. Yeah. We sound the same. Uh-huh. Um, but then <laughs> you what could do a new do? accent every time. I'm bad, oh. I'm bad at them, but you have fun ones. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that's my strategy Jessica, from for around delivery. the world. <laughs> I would love that. Eloise would love that so much. Anyway, I just thought that that was a very funny comment. And I also thought that it was funny that someone would go so far as to comment. Because what do I do with that information? I just want to give you some feedback on my way out the door. Becca was like, so I guess that means Lane needs a new co-host who doesn't sound like her. And Jessica needs a new co-host. I was like, (laughs) we're still in the baby stages of this. If we're multiplying and this, yeah, yeah, I don't think we're ready. It's not happening. (laughs) I would never. Anyway. Okay. Well, that was funny, but um, enjoy this podcast. Oh, you already did. Thanks for enjoying this podcast. You guys are doing great. Mm-hmm. Let us know. How how are you affected by this? What are you going to do? Mm-hmm. What are your questions? Yeah. Let's be a part of the journey together. And don't forget, we are a part of the Very Good Mothers Club community, the membership-based community. We lead calls in it once a month so you can get on there and ask us questions. We can talk, but also you can Mm -hmm. just talk in there. It's like a forum and we can all be giving our feedback. I'm tired. I know. It was a big one and then we had that emotional spike where we thought we lost everything. My adrenals need to rest. This is a real one, you guys. You're hearing a real one. You're going to get feedback. If you go in there, tell us what you're thinking. What are you going to do? What recipes are you going to try? Let's chat about it. This can be a 
a big community thing and we'll all get healthier together. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Love Bye-bye. you so much. See you soon. Bye.